Hello and welcome! I'm Matthias from marmoworld.com and in this tutorial I want to show you a great new feature of the next version of After Effects that is coming after the current version CS6. So currently it's time, uh, it's the time of the NAP show, so in Las Vegas at the NAB uh, Adobe is presenting some great new features that you can expect to be in the next version of After Effects and I have this next version here installed on my machine and the feature that I'm going to show you now is the one that is hiding here behind the Rotobrush tool that you know in CS6 and now in this next version you will also have the Refine Edges tool that works great together with the Rotobrush tool and while the Rotobrush creates really hard edges the Refine Edge tool can create semi-transparent edges and f like fuzzy edges as you have them when you rotoscope hair or something like this. And we want to use it to rotoscope this river here because if you look at this nice pan shot here beautiful scenery but this river is looking really muddy and if you try to extract this uh, with some color keying methods. It's really getting complicated because it has a, a large uh, color range and so you need to rotoscope it. And if you look at the detail, <coughs> the detail here with all these trees, it's getting really complicated to do this by hand. So an assisted rotoscoping workflow as offered by the Rotobrush is really helpful here. And we are going to use this combination of first using the Roto Brush and then the Refine Edge tool. So let's quickly repeat how the Roto Brush is working. You need to double click on your layer to open it in the layer view. And then with the tool selected, you just roughly mark the regions. Well, let's first get here uh, to some frame in the middle. And mark now the regions that belong to your river. And then it makes a first suggestion. Now I zoom in a bit more. And now in the regions that should not belong to the mat, I hold the Alt key pressed and drag a line. And then they are removed. Here the same. And on other regions like this one that should be included but are not, I let me just choose a smaller pen here. Window brushes. Something like this. <coughs> and here I hold this one to include it and oh, undo, alt key, select it to exclude it like this. Ah, and now I can go over here quickly over the rest. And now I've corrected here at all places where it needed some manual correction. And now I can go next, uh, go further to the next frame and the results are automatically propagated to the next frame. Or I can also extend here the propagation range quite a bit because in this image not much happens and go here to some frame a little bit ahead in time and you can see that now these changes are propagated by this green bar here to the next frames. And now the propagation arrived here and you can see we have a nice rotoscoping over this entire uh, range in time. Now let me propagate this for the rest of the clip. Okay, now this is also propagated and we say that we see that we really quickly got a quite decent rotoscoping mask for this river. So with this one we can now color correct. So let me go back to our main composition and now we have here isolated our river and let me just apply here some tint effect and just um, drag our a copy of our clip uh, in the background. So what we have now, we have just desaturated it and now we can colorize it by choosing here different colors. So let's say the black should be not a real black but more get some bluish tint here. Maybe like this. And now we have our mat and our blue river. But if we look at the details, if we zoom in here a bit, it doesn't look yet perfect. Yeah, because you see you can you have here a really sharp 
edge and you rather want it to be a bit fuzzy or the same also here. Yeah, There are regions like these here that are semi-transparent and you don't really have here such an exact edge and you can improve this now with the help of the refine edge tool. As the roto brush it works in the layer view so you switch back to the layer view and you can just zoom in here a bit. It's always best to work in a high resolution or yeah 100% should be enough and now we draw here paint strokes next to the border in the regions where we say here is the area in which the transition should happen, yeah, where parts are semi-transparent. And then uh, this turns into this x-ray view that you can also turn on and off here. And you can see now the totally black parts are totally opaque, the totally white parts are transparent, and everything in between is semi-transparent. And you can see that you get nice um, a uh, very nice uh, detailed transition here from the opaque regions here to the non-opaque regions here. Also if you have stuff like this here, yeah, little details, you can just mark it and you get semi-transparent uh, transitions, very nice. Like this and let me just continue this here a bit. Yeah, can extend it where you, you need more detail outside. And you can see you really get a lot lot of detail here. And now if we sp switch back to our composition view. And if you compare uh, the transition from the blue to the green in this area here, here you can see this really hard edge. And here you can see this nice transition and this really fuzzy edge that you get in these regions here. Or you can also compare it. This part here is already feathered with the refine edge tool. And this one here still has the sharp edge. Yeah, So really a huge, di uh, huge difference in how good this looks. Now it gets even better. You don't have to manually go along this entire edge and do it like this. This is, you, you should do it manually, Jeff, it, it's just if you want to control that you have in some regions this uh, edge improvement and in other regions not. But otherwise you can also go to the effect itself and um, here you have this base refine edge radius. And if you turn this up, Yeah, like this. Now I've set it to 1.6 pixel and now it has painted a 1.6 pixel paint stroke here along the entire edge. And maybe we can do this even more, like setting it to 5 pixels. And now we have such a fuzzy edge around everything. And then we can start correcting this even more. So let's say, yeah, look how nice this here really gets. Let's say, oh, here we want a little bit more. So uh, you can start painting there and improving it. Um, so in other words, you can either paint it or you can just set here the edge radius if you want it to be constant. And again, let's take a look at the comparison. So uh, let me go back to the composition view and go, for example, in this region here. Yeah, you have here your nice refined edge now and you can also um, click here render refined edge to turn this on and on and off so this it looks with a roto brush without any refined edge and like this it looks with a refined edge so you can see it's really really a huge difference here and what I like about the Refine Edge tool even more is that you don't always have to use it in combination with the Roto brush, but you can also use it on its own or with any other rotoscoping technique. So let me just create another copy of the clip because now I want to combine this not with the Roto brush, but with the Mocha Tracker. And the reason I want to use the Mocha Tracker for rotoscoping is that, I mean, the Roto brush is great when you have shapes that are deforming over time, yeah, where you really have to adjust the shape over time. But here it's really like you have one constant shape and it simply travels with this pen. Yeah, and this is great really to, to roto and track in Mocha. So let me just quickly create here some mask.
Okay, so now this mat is done, and I can set its mode to none, such that it's not visible anymore. This has no keyframes so far, I've just set the mask at the last frame, and you can see currently it's not yet moving. And so now I use uh, my tool Mocha Import, select the clip, and click on Track in Mocha. And now we have our clip, including the mask, in Mocha. So this is a great feature of Mocha Import that you can, or actually of Mocha Import Plus, that you can send clips, including their masks, uh, to Mocha. And still here, it's not yet uh, properly moving, but now we just select the layer and click on uh, Track Backwards. And now we let Mocha do its job. And now Mocha finished tracking, and when you scrub here in the timeline, you can see that the mask now perfectly moves with our clip. Of course, here at the right side, some new area is revealed, so we have to um, adjust this. Let me zoom in here a bit and make sure that the Uber key is enabled, such that we change the mask at all points in time simultaneously, because this is a change that should be everywhere. And then let me to use this tool here to add some more points to the mask. So just click here and add some point here and then we can drag this point here over a bit. Maybe add here another point and add here another point and here. And so you can now step by step refine your edge. I'm not going to do it in too great detail because I think you get the idea. Okay, roughly like this. And now we can export our shape by going to export shape data and choosing Mocha shape data for AA and copying this to the clipboard. Then we can go back to After Effects, make sure we are at the very first frame and go to Edit, Paste Mocha Mask. Now the new mask is inserted and we can actually delete the old one. And now you can see that the new mask perfectly moves with our rotoscoping. Again, let's just copy from the other composition the tint effect, Control c and Control v to tint our river and get another copy of our background. And if we zoom in, we see that again, in general, it's a nice rotoscoping, but especially in this region, for example, you really see that it's obvious that you have such a rough, um, such a hard edge here. Or also, if you look at these regions here, you can see there's really the mask. Yeah, if we enable the mask here, it really just roughly follows the shape of the trees, but this is by no means a precise rotoscoping. And in, pr in principle, you could now just again go here to the Refine Edge tool and paint it, but you can also use the Refine Soft Matte effect, which does essentially the same. Look what happens when I drag it onto my clip. Bam! You get a much preciser edge. Yeah, this is without the effect, this is with the effect. What a huge difference, completely automatically. And this is essentially like applying this Refine Edge tool, except that it has a fixed width. Yeah, so you have in this soft matte effect here an additional edge radius and now there is a region of 10 pixels around the alpha channel that refines this alpha. This has the advantage that you don't have to paint it manually and it computes much faster. So the other alternative using the Refine Edge tool has more flexibility because you can decide in which reason regions you need to refine. If you just want a constant refinement like here, then this Refine Soft Matte is the best thing you can do. So, and here you can see now the, the final results. So really quickly, you got a quite decent rotoscoping of this river. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, enjoy all my previews about the new features that are currently presented at NAP, and I hope I see you again in the next tutorial.